we're going to get started. We got uh, Kelowna, the home team, coming up. We have Summer, Mason, and Wade. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Mason Bittner. I'm joined by my colleagues uh, Summer Efre and Kevin Wong. Um, we are proud to share with you today about how the city of Kelowna is going to transform the chatbot game. Uh, just a heads up, um, we'll, be showing, we'll also be showing a QR code shortly to do a quick audience poll. Uh, so get your phones ready. Don't worry, we're not going to try to trick you into voting for us, although that would have been smart had I known. <laughs> um, but first, uh, a little bit about our city. So let me advance here. Okay. I probably don't need to say this, uh, but just in case, we've put a pin on the map to show you where we are currently located. Uh, here is the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Steelks Okanagan people. And as many of you probably know, uh, Kelowna is a vibrant mid-sized city. We're located uh, in the southern interior of British Columbia, Canada. We're situated in the heart of the Okanagan Valley, uh, surrounded by mountains and lakes and vineyards. Uh, we have a population of nearly 150,000 people, and it is the largest city in the regional district of central Okanagan. As for the city of Kelowna itself, uh, we're made up of 1,000 passionate staff, uh, working to make our city a better place to live, work, and play. I'm just gonna catch up to myself here. Uh, we, we love our city. Uh, we wanna be a part of the decisions and actions that improve Kelowna today and tomorrow. All right. So I'm guessing you all know and love or hate uh, chatbots. <laughs> and we're hoping to change that. We're hoping to change that by creating chatbots that are purpose-built and helpful. Um, hopefully numbered of the days that you will get the dreaded I don't know response. <laughs> but first, uh, let's start at the beginning of our journey. Why did we decide to create uh, chatbots in the first place? There were several, several reasons behind it. Uh, first, uh, as you see on the screen there, is the 24-7 access to information and services. Uh, that was really important to us, uh, especially at the start of uh, the COVID pandemic. Uh, secondly, we wanted to improve uh, customer service. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of big tech companies out there that are doing amazing things, and there was uh, starting to be quite a wide gap between what they were providing customers and what uh, citizens were experiencing when working with municipalities and accessing services. So we wanted to bridge that gap a little bit and try to catch up to, you know, say, and Amazon or some of the big banks that have like really great apps that are very useful. So we wanted to meet those changing expectations. Uh, thirdly is the omni-channel approach that you can have with chatbots. So you can have it, you know, of course, we've all experienced the web-based chatbots. Uh, we also can have them on our telephone lines. You can have them on voice assistance and social media. Um, there's a lot of different options there. And, uh, you know, with all of this, it leads to quicker uh, resolution um, for our citizens when they're accessing services. They don't have to go to our website and try to use the search and find the information they're looking for. They can just jump into the chat either over the phone or on our website and find, uh, find their answers more easily. Um, and lastly, um, which is something that Jazz spoke about this morning in his keynote, is that uh, we want to, we, want to, we want to be a tech leader among municipal governments, and that's something that we take seriously and, and that uh, we strive for. And then, of course, like he said, we, we hope to share our learnings with other municipalities as well. All right, so now is the time. Uh, so please scan the QR code on the screen and take the poll. Um, we're not going to do results right away, so you do. It's only one question. It'll be really quick, but... Um, we'll be sharing the results at the end of the presentation just to let everyone have a chance to, uh, to do that. So I'll leave it up here for just a few more seconds. Uh, it's okay if we don't get everyone. We just kind of want to get an idea from you. All right. So I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Summer, 
and she'll take over. Thanks, Mason. Um, with that, we'll take a deeper look into our chatbot journey. So initially, we launched live chat um, on our airport website. Live chat, if you haven't heard about it, is with an actual human on the other side. Um, and we wanted to initially enhance customer service and create efficiencies. Um, in the end, we figured out that staff were like stretched a little bit too thin, um, as we've alluded to earlier. So we were trying to find ways um, to um, change that service from something that was uh, staffed to something that was automated to expand um, our customer service options to 24 seven without having to impact our staff any further. So my slides are doing funky things. I apologize about that. Uh, <laughs> so here with the airport, we had a great use case with less content than we have on Kelowna.ca. The airport's a lot, or the airport is a smaller use case. Um, we also had a clear set of frequently asked questions and opportunities for dynamic integrations like security wait time and flight status information. So in 2019, we were getting ready to launch our first chatbot, and then. COVID-19 disrupted things a little bit. So um, after that little speed bump, we moved forward with launching our first chatbots in December of 2020 on both the airport and the city of Kelowna websites. Um, we hosted information about the constantly changing COVID-19 COVID environment and how to access services during that time. Since then, we've been busy scaling up our chatbots, providing more content on different, on, on different channels. Um, so I'd like you to meet Kai. Kai is our next evolution of City Bots. It stands for Kelowna Artificial Intelligence, and we got pretty creative with that one. Um, <laughs> Uh, Kai includes our web-based chatbots and those that can be accessed on our phone lines, like for revenue, landfill, and snow operations. To give you a quick idea of usage, so far this year, Kai has provided service to more than 30,000 users over the course of 47,000 conversations. And during the height of tax season this year, May 15th to July 31st, the Revenue Voice Assistant had more than 13,000 conversations, resulting in a 24% reduction in calls to staff. All right. So you might be interested to learn a little bit about how it all works. We build our bots on frequently asked questions from our customers, uh, which we get from our frontline staff. This is a great starting place for developing chatbot content, but the magic really happens when we integrate with city systems and more recently with generative AI. Along the way, we've learned that adding too many questions to our bots can get them confused. So we've created topic-specific bots to help reduce this, as you can see there. Now, this isn't without its issues, and we're still learning with each new bot that we implement. For example, users can get stuck in one bot and its limited responses. So for instance, if somebody was interested in recreation information, they might select that topic. Then they've asked their questions, but now they're interested, in cor of course, in something different, like property taxes. Transferring the user between those two bots has been a bit of a challenge, and it's not seamless, but it's something that we continue to work on with our supportive Zamo team. So that brings me to the technology. Our chatbots are currently housed on the Zamo AI platform, which is built on Azure Bot Services. We integrate with other systems and services, like GIS map overlays, cognitive search indexing, and generative AI using Azure OpenAI. On the flip side of technology is policy and governance, which we think is a very important part of using any AI-powered tools. We'd love to talk more about this, but we are short on time today, so uh, we just wanted to make mention of it. Uh, we also wanted to note that chatbots especially AI-powered ones, can generate some very interesting answers or comments, if, unless you're a skilled prompt designer, uh, as we saw in the jokes earlier this morning. Um, so in response to that, Mason and I are taking a conversation design course through the Conversation Design Institute so that we can create more helpful and reliable experiences for our users. All right. 
As Mason mentioned, um, users may ask questions that aren't in our frequently asked questions yet, resulting in that frustrating, I don't know, response. Uh, OpenAI is helping us to change this. So um, an example of this can be found in our freshly live building permit chatbots. The beta versions actually soft launched yesterday. Um, when a user asks a question with an unknown response, we've designed the bot to access a web service that uses cognitive search and open AI to reason over specific city documents to provide the user with an answer. This is unlike ChatGPT, which searches the whole internet for information. So now it's demo time. Uh, we're gonna show a short pre-recorded demo of the new building permit chatbot in action. Um, we thought about giving a live demo, but those can be tricky. So um, we'll give this a try. All right. That did not work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So you'll see here uh, the user has come to our apply for a swimming pool permit page. They've clicked on the chat icon and it's launched the bot. They can select, they don't know where to start if they need a more guided journey. From here, they've cho chose the above ground pools permit um, and they can get more information about that through a series of menus that we present. So here you can see they've asked about application fees. They get a response from our chatbot that we've designed and then it presents the menus again so they can continue through their journey of learning about the building permit application process. They can also type in a question, a free form question at any point in time to get more clarification about the needs of the application process. In this instance, there wasn't a Q&A available already, so it's gone out to OpenAI and generated a response based on specific documentation that we've provided. Again, it'll provide menu options so you can continue your journey and also ask freeform questions along the way. So we think this demonstrates how the building permit chatbots can help users who aren't familiar with the building permit process and those who are just looking for clarification on the finer details. It also shows how the guided journeys are complemented by questions and answers, plus that fallback to OpenAI, which reasons over specific city documents to provide answers to questions that we haven't captured yet. With that, over to Kevin. Thank you, Summer. What a great video. I hope you all enjoying that. I know I love that video. I watched it a few times. Every time I feel <laughs> wonderful. Thank you, Summer. <laughs> so what's the difference between the artificial intelligence-based chat bus we are showing you today versus the old dummy Telephone chat bots will all be frustrated before. I mean, remember those days you often overheard people speak loudly, slowly, and clearly, banking, checking account, talk to agent. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? The key difference here is actually accuracy. Accuracy is the most important part of chat bot. It's the key to success. A well-built chatbot actually understands the user's questions and can give the most accurate and the best answer possible. Without accuracy, we are not building chatbots or applications. We are building users' frustrations. We simply frustrate poor users who happen to use our chatbots. So how to achieve accuracy? Besides my colleague, Mason and uh, Summer mentioned to limit the data source of the city content only, like only use city data, not the internet, but also we use the keywords, as you can see, to use the keywords to boost the search score of the cognitive search indexing, to make sure the best answer always come back first and give to user. And we spend a lot of time to make sure we improve accuracy as much as possible. I also want to give you an example about the chatbot that with high accuracy, how that help. See that little guy there? That's our snowplow starters chatbot we released on a snow sea day in December last year. The very next day after the public release, the phone calls to public works department reduced 70 to 80%. Staff 
huge save of staff time and staff love the that. Funny thing is, we always have a web map displayed the exactly same information of the snowplow starters. The web map always there, but it's a chart bar really help, which lead to my next topic, redefine GIS. Now getting pretty serious here, so <laughs> you can see I'm really serious now. <laughs> Remember this old joke about what GIS analysts do? <laughs> Thanks to evolution, more specifically, thanks to technology, this old joke became history. I hope all of you can really think with me for a second here. Let's really think about it. Without the chat bars, how do people get the GIS information? For example, zoning. They have to look at the map viewer, find the zoning layer out of 100 layers on the layers panel, turn on the zoning layer, and then read the map label of the zoning to get the zoning code RU2 or identify zoning layer in some case, and then read 300 pages of city zoning bylaw to get any information of that RU2 zone. Whew, a lot of work, right? <laughs> but with chatbot, users don't need to do any of this. They can simply ask. Chatbot will answer the question, will tell them the property belong to RU2 zone, and tell them all the information they need to know about RU2 zone based on city zoning bylaw. Users don't need to read 300 pages anymore. And now, imagine this chatbot actually work with all the map layers, not only zoning layer. So this is really in the first time in history for the first time in history, we actually have technology to achieve this. We probably, all of you, I know you guys, some of you many years, you probably dream of this many years. Now we actually have technology to do that. This is truly a new era of GIS. This is actually what I'm working on right now to integrate map layers into chatbot. I mean, I mentioned, I know some of you, I see some friends, I know you like 10, 20 years, you know me, I always love maps, for sure. I love maps. But maps are nothing but a visual presentation of data. Now I'm using, now I'm using artificial intelligence to present my data in a different way, in a better way, in a conversational way. This is actually rethink about the GIS applications to redefine GIS, to build AI-based GIS applications. That's what I'm doing right now. There's still a lot of work to do. It's not done yet because I'm trying to enable users to have a direct conversation with my data without maps. <laughs> you bet, it's a lot of work. I'm still working on that. I need a lot of time to build it. It's still future. But the future is here. Now I'd like to pass back to my colleague Mason to continue about future. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. All right. So what does the future of chatbots look like at the city of Kelowna? Uh, some of our hopes and dreams are to implement more voice assistants. Uh, right now, we have a number of them, but we're hoping to expand that across the organization. Uh, we also want to add more integrations uh, to our existing data and, and also you know, to our new chatbots uh, and our existing chatbots, just really provide a better experience for our citizens, kind of similar to what Kevin was just talking about. We also want to um, connect our development services chatbot with the true online application process, and that's currently, currently being developed, and actually Jazz uh, mentioned it this morning as well. Um, we want to create a digital concierge, um, something that we're working on currently, um, that will be housed in a kiosk uh, and be placed in our airport for passengers to use so they can find information on services and flight status and wayfinding um, and stuff like that. And then eventually we want to create an all-encompassing 311 so that when you call the main line for the city, um, you'll be greeted by a voice assistant that will help answer your questions and direct your call to the appropriate department. So some of the new technologies that we're, we're looking at in doing this, um, just to mention a couple, are of course Microsoft Copilot, which Jazz also mentioned, um, and Microsoft Power Virtual Agents. Uh, those are kind of the two technologies uh, that we're, we're currently exploring. Um, but one thing we've noticed is that technology is moving very quickly, especially in this area. Uh, we don't fully know what the future will hold. Uh, all we can do is keep pushing forward and being agile. All right, so 
that brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, but before I forget, I just want to quickly look at poll results. Uh, we didn't have a way to bring it up uh, dynamically for you, so I'm just going to take a quick look at my phone here. So just bear with me for a second. All right. Just going to pull up those guys here. Okay, so uh, 137 of you uh, responded, which is amazing. Um, you guys are quick. I shouldn't have expected anything else. Um, so 19 of you already have one or more chatbots. Uh, 41 of you are actively exploring the use case. 38 uh, are wanting to learn more. Uh, 33 are not quite there yet. And then six are not going near it with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> All right. So I don't know if we have any time for questions. We're pretty much right at our time limit. Um, but we do have uh, an email uh, on the screen just there. So feel free to reach out to chatbot at clona.ca. And uh, myself or Summer or Kevin uh, would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>